Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Schnellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In previous videos, we started talking about the immune system. Today, we'll dig deeper into the innate immunity. It's the world of your neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, natural killer cells, macrophages, interferons, antibodies, and the complement system. Hey Metacosis, why did we call it the complement system? I'm glad you asked, because it complements the action of the antibodies. Complement belongs to the innate system, but you can think of it as the bridge between the innate and the adaptive immunity. Now let's get started. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. By the end of this video, you should have memorized every single word on the slide because this is crucial for your exam as well as for life. In a previous video in this playlist, we compare between the innate and the adaptive immunity. You were born with the former, but you have to acquire the latter. As you know, your blood is made of plasma and cells. The plasma is water and proteins. The proteins are albumin and globulin. The globulins are alpha globulins, beta globulins, and gamma globulins. Today, we do care about the gamma globulins because these are your antibodies or your immunoglobulins. How about the cells? The cells of your blood are either red blood cells, white blood cells, or platelets. Who are the most numerous? Red blood cells, of course. We're talking millions in every cubic millimeters. Your blood is made of plasma and cells. Let's talk about cells. First of all, you have to understand that all of them come from the bone marrow. Be specific, the stem cells of the bone marrow. Be more specific, the pluripotent stem cells of the bone marrow. And they are either myeloid or lymphoid. Myeloid will give you everything except the lymphocytes and natural killer cells. These come from lymphoid lineage. Other than these three, everything is myeloid, including your red blood cells, your platelets, and most of your white blood cells. I said most, not all, because don't forget these are white blood cells too. They are lymphoid. Other than that, most of your white blood cells are myeloid. Tell me more about my white blood cells. Well, you have lymphocytes, these are lymphoid origin, and you have monocytes, myeloid origin. You also have neutrophil, basophils, and eosinophils, collectively known as granulocytes. These are also of myeloid origin. How do you remember the granulocytes, medicosis? Just remember the mnemonic BEN, basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils. Which white blood cell is the most abundant in the circulation? Neutrophils, of course. Your blood is made of plasma and cells. The plasma has water and proteins. The plasma proteins are albumin or globulins. Let's talk about globulins. Alpha 1, alpha 2, beta or gamma globulins. Which one do we care about the most today? Gamma globulins. These are your antibodies, aka immunoglobulins, because they are involved in your immunity. Let's review the white blood cells functions that we talked about in previous videos. Neutrophils, they fight bacteria. Neutrophils are the cells of acute inflammation. Neutrophils are the pus cells because they secrete pus. When I have a collection of pus, we call this an abscess. How about lymphocytes? Instead of acute inflammation, we're talking chronic inflammation here. Instead of bacteria, we're talking fighting viruses and fungi. Instead of mostly innate immunity, we're talking about adaptive acquired immunity. How about monocytes? First of all, monocytes are equivalent to macrophages. When they are in the blood, they are called monocytes. When they are in the tissue, we call them macrophages. Either way, they have phagocytic function. They love to eat foreign invaders. How about eosinophils? Remember with the eosinophils? Remember eo, parasites, eo, allergy, eo, anaphylaxis, double eo. Next, we have basophils. Basophils are in the blood. When they go to the tissue, we call them mast cells. Similar to here, monocytes, macrophages, equivalent. Basophils, mast cells, equivalent. And they secrete histamine. Histamine is involved in allergy. Many of the cold medications, many of the allergy medications that you have seen before contain antihistaminic agents. Immunity. Definition. The ability of your body to resist microorganisms or 
the toxins made by these doofuses. We have two types of immunity, innate, which is non-specific, you were born with this, but acquired is specific and you were not born with it. You have to acquire it via experience. When you encounter foreign invaders, you will develop acquired immunity. Types of immunity, innate versus adaptive. Innate, non-specific, adaptive or acquired is specific. What do you mean by specific? One cell is targeting one foreign organism. Ah, specificity. Just like there is a doctor to treat your skin diseases, another doctor to treat your kidney diseases, a third doctor to treat your lung diseases. Hashtag specialization. Innate immunity is less potent because it's not specific. Adaptive immunity is more potent. Innate, you were born with it. Adaptive, you have to develop it after birth, like a skill that you have to develop. No one is born a champion. No one is born with adaptive immunity either. Innate immunity does not remember the previous encounters and it does not develop, it does not get better with subsequent reactions. But adaptive immunity learns from past experience so that the second encounter with the same doofus organism is going to be stronger and faster and we will punch those bacteria in the teeth. Innate immunity responds in the same fashion to any invader. For example, the hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Do you think it cares if the invader is a bacteria, virus, or fungus? No, it's just an acid. It burns everything alike. This is not the case with your adaptive immunity. We're talking specificity here. Your immunity is either innate or adaptive. Tell me about the innate, the acid in the stomach, the IgA and the mucus in your mucous membrane, such as your mouth, your nose, anal cavity, vaginal canal, etc. Your saliva, of course. Your skin is a protector. Adaptive is divided into natural and artificial. Naturally acquired adaptive immunity could be passive or active. Also, the artificial could be passive or active. When it's artificial, it's related to the doctor. The doctor did it to me. But when it's natural, nope, the doctor did not do it to me. Natural passive, I got those antibodies from mommy via the placenta or through mother's milk. This is naturally acquired, not something that the doctor artificially did to you. How about active natural immunity? You got infected with an organism and you developed immunity against that organism. You were being active here. You made new antibodies, you responded. Unlike the passive, where you just acquired pre-formed, pre-existent antibodies from mommy. Next, artificially acquired, blame your doctor or thank your doctor. Passive versus active. Passive, my doctor gave me anti-serum. What the flip is that? Serum from another body that contains antibodies to help me fight infections. The doctor did it to me, ergo, artificial. I did not do anything, therefore passive. But the doctor can give me vaccines. Oh, what are vaccines? Well, they could be killed or they could be live attenuated. Basically, they contained either dead bacteria or weakened bacteria or virus, etc. And now I have to actively fight the doofus and develop immunity. Tell me about my antibodies. They are gamma globulins, they are immunoglobulins, they have five subtypes, IgG, IgM, IgA, IgG, IgE, like the name Majid. IgG, small, opsonization, they make the bacteria tasty, and since they are small, they can cross the placenta, they are involved with the secondary response to the organism. How about the primary response to the organism? That's your IgM. It is big, it cannot cross the placenta. IgM and or IgG can fix and activate the complement, and we'll talk about that later. How about IgA? IgA is in the mucosa. It decided to leave the blood and ascend until it reaches your mucous membranes. IgG is produced first. No one knows the exact function. IgE, just remember, ew again. Anaphylaxis, allergy, parasites, ew. Your innate immunity is non-specific, which means no recognition of specific foreign cells. The hydrochloric acid is an equal opportunity offender. It doesn't give a rip. Innate immunity does not need previous exposure. Your HCL is your HCL, and it has a quick response. 
components of your innate immunity. You have mechanical and chemical barriers, the acid in your stomach, your mucous membranes, your epithelium. You have non-specific cellular defenses. Why non-specific? Because we are innate. When we talk about the adaptive immunity later, we'll talk about specific. Microphages. This is an old term that used to imply everything other than macrophages. Because macrophages are big, these cells are small. Oh, who are these ones? Neutrophils, eosinophils, etc. Don't forget your natural killer cells. Street fighters, not specialized military personnel. Next, you have non-specific humoral defense. What does humoral mean? Humor is a fluid. Remember the theory of the four humors in ancient Greece? Blood, phlegm, yellow bile, black bile, or something like that. You have lysosomes, and remember the fusion between the lysosome and the phagosome and the destruction of the invader? We talked about this in previous videos in this biology playlist. Interferons, we'll talk about them soon. Acute phase reactions, such as your C-reactive protein made by your liver, and the propyridin system. Why do you call it pro? Because it comes before, it is pre. Purdin, I-N means protein, and purd is to destroy. <gasps> it's the pre-destruction protein. It's the protein before destruction. And of course, I will activate the complement system to complement the action of the antibody, and we will kick the bacteria in the butt. Interferons, the name has the answer. Have you ever wondered why we call them interferons? because they are proteins that interfere with viral replication. Because let me tell you the story. When viruses invade my body, they try to enter into the cell and conquer it, and then use my own machinery, DNA, RNA, enzymes, etc., to make the virus proteins. Really? They are hijacking my tools. They are hijacking my factory. But thankfully, you have some interferons to stop this process. There are natural interferons, you already have them, and there are artificial interferons that the doctor can inject into your body. In the good old days, which were not so good, this was the only method available to treat viral hepatitis infections. When they are in the blood, they are called basophils. When they are in the tissue, they are called mast cells. Similarly, when they are in the blood, they are the monocytes. But when they go to the tissue, they are the macrophages. What's the function of basophils slash mast cells? Histamine release, acute inflammation, allergy, etc. How about monocytes slash macrophages? They are phagocytic cells. They eat stuff. And the name continues. In the blood, monocytes. In the tissue, macrophages or histiocyte. In the liver, Kupfer cells. In the brain, microglia. Now let's review the complement system very quickly. If you want detailed discussion about this, you can find it in my physiology playlist and in my immunology playlist. The basic idea is simple. Why do we call it complement? Because it complements the action of the antibodies. Okay, thank you so much. It helps the antibodies perform their function and destroy the foreigners. We have three pathways in the complement system. The only difference is who pulled the trigger, who started the cascade reaction. If the one that pulls the trigger was antigen antibody complex, this is the classical pathway. But if the one that pulled the trigger was the bacterial endotoxins and properdin, the protein before destruction, then we're talking about alternative complement pathway. If the man who's binding lectin was responsible for pulling the trigger, then we're talking about lectin pathway. The end result is destruction of the stupid invader. Okay, medicosis, suppose that we pulled the trigger and activated the complement cascade reaction. Now what? What's the effect? Agglutination. Get those bacteria, lump them together so that you can destroy them in one blast. Many birds with one stone. Next, bacterial opsonization. I'm gonna help make those bacteria tasty so that my immune cells are gonna have a good time eating those doofuses. Chemotaxis, what does that mean? Chemo, chemical, taxi, taxi. Recruitment, movement. Recruitment of the neutrophils so that they leave the blood vessel and they go to the tissue and the interstitial fluid because the bacteria is here most of the time, not in the blood. Next, direct cell killing. Oh, I killed the bacteria. I perforated the nasty little thing. Neutralization of toxins and then the explosion and release of histamine. Let's learn more about the complement system. 
the complement cascade is kind of similar to the coagulation cascade. If you remember the coagulation cascade, we started with fibrinogen and we became fibrin. We started with the inactive and we became active. We started with the proenzyme and ended up with the enzyme. We started with the zymogen, we ended up with the active enzyme. How did the activation happen? It was prothrombin. Have you ever wondered how did prothrombin activate the fibrinogen into fibrin? It was by proteolysis. It was by destruction and breaking down the big protein into a smaller, more active protein. The same exact story happens with the complement. You start with inactive proteins and then by creative destruction, proteolysis or cleavage, you have the active enzyme. When the enzyme is active, we add a hyphen on top of it. Pause and review. Can you remind me who pulled the trigger in the alternative pathway? Yeah, bacterial endotoxin and properdin. Gotcha. But is it just the bacteria? No, it could be bacterial, fungal, or viral. The bacteria has toxins such as the LPS of the gram-negative bacteria. Fungi have cell walls. Viruses, some of them have envelopes. And they can activate your complement and pull the trigger, which hastens their own destruction. That was deep. Antigen antibody complex will activate the classical path. Bacteria endotoxin properdin will activate alternative. Man and binding lectin will activate the lectin pathway. The end result is the formation of the MAC or the terminal complement complex, which will destroy the bacteria. The MAC will attack. Example, here is antigen antibody reaction triggering the classical complement pathway. Creative destruction, creative destruction, breaking down, proteolysis, activation, activation, until boom, you got your membrane attack complex. The MAC will attack and the bacteria is gone. Go to hell. This is a wonderful slide that contains the three complement pathways together. Classical, alternative, and lectin. If you see, the end result is the same. It's the formation of the MAC, which will attack. By now, I hope this slide is a piece of cells of your innate immunity. Macrophages, these are phagocytic cells. Macrophages are the same as monocytes, histiocytes, kupfer cells, microglial cells. And then the microphages, the old term, means what? basically granulocytes. You can call them granulocytes, you can call them polymorphonuclear leukocytes, abbreviated PMNs or PMLs. Neutrophils, they fight bacteria, they make pus, they are the cells of acute inflammation. Basophils, they release histamine. Eosinophils, parasites and allergies and anaphylactic. Ew. Mast cells or basophils, basically two sides of the same coin, histamine release again. Dendritic cells are antigen presenting cells. They take a piece of the bacteria and present this antigen, the piece, to your lymphocytes so that your lymphocytes can recognize the foreign invader and destroy it and remember it so that the second encounter with the same organism is going to be stronger and faster. That's the story of the adaptive immunity. So here is a cell that belongs to the innate immunity that will present the antigen to lymphocytes which do belong to the adaptive immunity because your innate and adaptive immunities are linked. There is another important link. It's the complement system. Natural killer cells, street fighters, they kill everybody they do not like. How about cancer cells? I'm going to kill them. How about your own cells that got infected? I'm also going to kill them. I kill everybody. In the next video, we'll talk about the adaptive immunity, which is more sophisticated. And you have one cell for one target. If you like this video, you will enjoy my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It will teach you about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. Moreover, I have a kidney physiology course on my website too. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.